Hey guys, what's up? It's Power of War. Welcome back. And yeah, I am finally bringing you some Blizzard World gameplay. Now, yeah, I know the map came out since Tuesday and I've been wanting to upload a video, but uh, it's just been rather busy lately. So I'm finally just getting to it now. This is obviously some um, quick play from the arcade. And we are going to be playing the defensive side. Now, I do know I need to do a walkthrough of Blizzard World, you know, as Farah. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be doing it for the Blizzard game Easter eggs because I don't know any Blizzard, you know, games. Yeah, I've heard of them, World of Warcraft, Star, um, StarCraft, uh, Diablo, but I've never played them other than, like I said, Heroes of the Storm, which was just to get the two, um, excuse me, the Diva skin and the Genji skin. But like I said in previous videos, I did not like Heroes of the Storm, so... When I do the walkthrough, you know, don't be expecting any Easter eggs. I'm just going to do like a fly through pretty much how Farah can be effective on this map. But I'll talk about it and um, some some of it in this gameplay. Now, for this gameplay, I am queued up with um, Devontos and Alero for this. Devontos is running the new Orisa skin. I forgot the name of it, but I actually want that skin for Orisa. And Alero is ru running Sombra. Now, what are my thoughts about Blizzard World now that it's out? Well, you know, like I've mentioned before in previous videos, I'm not really a big fan of it. I was actually hoping, you know, like I said, for maybe another uh, one of the heroes, like home level, you know, like how Dorado is supposed to be for Sombra, Route 66 is supposed to be for McCree, um, obviously Chateau Gilliard is Widowmaker's home. You know, I was kind of like, hoping for a level like that, but... I guess maybe that'll happen on the next one. But how Blizzard World plays out, I actually like it a lot. Yeah, I know it's another uh, hybrid assault payload map. But the way the map is laid out is actually very good for Pharah players now. Some of you guys may not know this, but um, because Farah is basically the only hero in the game who can stay in the air indefinitely if you play her right. Uh, some of you may not know this, but Far um, especially for the people who are just getting Overwatch for Christmas, Farah's main weakness is open space. It took me some time to learn that. You know, you think that because as Farah, you know, obviously you're basically the only aerial hero, hero it's best to just stay in the air in open spaces all the time. And actually, that's not the case. Uh, Farah works very effectively in um, using the environment to her advantage, which is basically how I play now. And that's actually how Blizzard World is set up. There is a lot of good space for Farah to be, you know, using cover behind and raining rockets. As you see, um, and you know you're gonna be seeing that in this gameplay. I'm, I'm gonna be using the walls to my advantage Obviously because you know, I'm not always gonna be staying behind the Orisa shield all the time now Yeah, I'm gonna die here and there of course that's expected there is almost impossible to go throughout a game without dying at least once But it it is possible if you're very good But yeah, Blizzard World is a very good map for Farah um and I will say this now, I, I've played a few other games in Blizzard World. Blizzard World also works really well for Widowmaker. There are a lot of good lines of sight for her where she can be pretty far and, you know, pick people off. Now, I tried Widowmaker once in Blizzard World for defense and she works very well in this area, you know, trying to control the point. But... Well, the enemies did wind up capturing the payload and it actually didn't work in Widow's favor now That it might be the opposite for the attack, you know, if Widowmaker's on the attacking side, but I have yet to get, you know, even try that, so Anyway, um Like I was saying Blizzard World is very good for Farah. It's very good for Widowmaker and To my surprise, it's actually very good for Torb. Torbjorn as well now I've already had a few games, you know, playing as Farah, and the enemies take a Torb on defense, and finding that turret is actually pretty hard now. There are so many places that Torb can put this turret, and it actually becomes even harder to find. 
So Torbjorn is another good person for this map. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm referring to defense because Torbjorn is a defensive hero. I really can't say he's good for it. You know, he's good for attack. I don't know. But, um, you know, like I said, us using the walls um, to shoot down on the choke. I, I can't even stay far back here and, and shoot the choke out there. And I even checked it out. You can actually shoot behind between that statue's legs. What I don't know what statue that is. I know. It's, I guess it's a person that I've. I haven't even actually flown up to the face to see who it is. But as you can see, even using the sh the the statue as a you know as a defensive shield for myself. And this is a flank route. You know, and for people who um obviously try to flank for the point um. It, the, this front choke area is almost basically set like the um, second point of Anubis. You know, you got the main choke in the middle, and then the enemies can either go right or left and right away. I mean, excuse me, not not second point Anubis, first point Anubis. So, but yeah. Um, other than that, you know, I'll I'll do a walkthrough eventually. I I don't know if it's gonna be my next video or not, but that's pretty much about it. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of this video. If you did, you know, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.